Welcome everybody to week one, day one of Computer Science 40. This is a traditional first semester class that teaches you computer science. It will teach you all of the basics of computer science, at least up to a certain point. Second semester computer science, CSI 41, will sort of finish your um, education on how to program. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, a four-year computer science degree is four years of learning how to program. It's not actually true. Um, you will know how to program after. Thank you, girl. You get to say hi to the, the class. This is my daughter. She's a cool kid. What are you working on now? Anyhow, so, uh, so basically learning to program is a one-year endeavor. So you take CSI 40, you take CSI 41, you know how to program. Then after that, you are going to be using your computer science skills, uh, not necessarily like learning how to program after that point. So um, this is class, right? Yeah, yeah. this is this is class. Welcome to Discord. So uh, this is the first day. We're going to do our traditional stuff today. We're going to go over, you know, like how grades work in the syllabus and all that uh, somewhat boring stuff, but uh, we, we might do a fun activity at the end. So all of the class will take place on Discord as far as like lectures go. If you need help for homework assignments, there is a Help Center chat channel on Discord as well, where you can, um, like, you're like, hey, uh, when is homework due again? Or if you if you uh, actually want help with your homework, you can ask questions on there. Um, you can help each other out on it. Um, the only kind of uh, requirement that I have is you don't post, like, large blocks of code, because then, you know, people will just copy it. Uh, it's really important when people are uh, learning a foreign language, which is what learning to program is, it's learning a foreign language, that you kind of work through it all yourself. You know, like uh, I just took Japanese 2 last semester and it was really important for me to actually work out all the answers, you know. You know, what is your name? What does you want? Boo do this. You know, you have to you have to work out all the things. Yeah, hey, speaking of which, my name is Bill Kearney. I am a computer science instructor here at Columbus Community College. Uh, we now have a second one, Juan Nichols. And uh, he's a cool dude. You can yeah. take classes with him as well. Yes, what's up, bro? Is this the first day of class? It's the first day of class right I now. Yeah. yesterday was... Yesterday was Sunday, girl. Uh, no. Friday. or Was Friday last day? Oh, uh, I mean, it was... Uh, yeah, we had meetings. Like, all the all the instructors have meetings online. But this is the first day of class right now. Okay, I so... I thought this is the second day of class. No, today's Monday, girl. It's the first day of class. Hmm. Kearney is live. Are we supposed to be watching that? Yes, you, yes, you are. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, but... Uh, good news is um, all the all the lectures are recorded, so we're recording live right now, and uh, all the lectures will be put up on YouTube. There will be a playlist for the class, and you can that yellow on white <laughs> um, has that burning oh, on your on your eyes. Are you doing Unreal Engine? We're not doing Unreal Engine today, girl. <laughs> um, so. Um, we're gonna go over we're gonna go over the syllabus, the grading, the the way the class works, things like that. But basically, um, yeah, this is where lectures will be delivered at least until the Delta virus goes down, and then uh, we may do some sort of hybrid system in which um, uh, we might have class in person with broadcasts online. The classroom on campus is set up to do that, so you would be able to take it either in person or online, but I'm not going to do that while we're having a big uh, surge in COVID cases right now. Um, I, I don't feel like it would be um, safe for students to do that. Yeah, how's that burning, huh? Okay. All right, fine, fine, fine. Uh, uh, there you go. How, is that better? Just for you, Hazelton, we just do a glowing, a glowing red. How about that? <laughs> uh, uh, there. How about that? night mode enabled? Okay. So uh, easy enough, easy enough, easy enough. Yeah. So we're gonna go over the syllabus. We're gonna talk about computer science as a field and uh, writing your first program. Not on, not on the server. Um, all of you guys should have gotten, by the way, um, an email from me a couple days ago explaining the things you need to install uh, for this 
uh, class. It's also on Canvas. Canvas is sort of your central resource for this class. Um, it's the one that has the Lord of the Rings meme on it. That's a semicolon. The joke will become clear to you if uh, you've, if you've never programmed before, it'll become clear within I don't know, a week or two what that joke means. So, uh, Canvas, the module section, is where the class sort of is. That's your main like uh, starting point in all the all the things you have to do in the class. Ah, oh, man, that that is bright, huh? You can see the the heat. Okay, so uh, there's some general resources. Uh, it doesn't really matter right now. Right here is the link to Zybooks. You need to click on that and purchase the textbook. Um, and uh, uh, make sure that it's the CSI 40 textbook. I think I might have had the, uh, the link up the other day um, with a bad URL. I think I copy pasted something wrong. And um, so if you, uh, if, you, if you click on the Zybooks link and um, you see something about like counting integers or something like that, that's the wrong, that's the wrong textbook. But this, this is what it should look like. It should say, Introduction to C++. C++ is the programming language we're going to be learning this semester. Like I said, you're learning a foreign language, just with a little bit more math. Um, uh, this is what it should look like. And then over here, there should be like a link or something to purchase the textbook. The, um, the textbook is integrated with Canvas. So as you read the textbook, it automatically reports back to me that you've been doing the reading. And so um, it's nice. It, uh, Zybooks is actually a really nice tool. Um, I don't know, you can like click on something like that and uh, it, it kind of explains things to you and ha has a little check for knowledge. If you get something wrong, um, you can correct it. Not a big deal. It's low stakes, right? Um, and you could, if, if you wanted to, like just not read anything, just like click on everything and whatever, work your way through it. But um, you're going to sabotage your own learning if you do that. Trust me. Um, you want to you want to read the things carefully and then answer the questions carefully and read the responses and not just like eh, yeah whatever you know um, you know it's it's low stakes but it's still it's still on you to to do the reading and, and learn and, and stuff like that. So uh, I'm gonna give you guys till I don't know Wednesday to buy the textbook. Um, I know that. Uh, there's there's sometimes situations with uh, with money and things like that. So, um, yeah, there's there's no Zybooks quite yet, but we'll we'll get to that we'll get to that soon. So uh, here on here on uh, Canvas you have modules, and every week basically there's going to be lectures posted. Um, it's going to be a URL that'll take you to the YouTube site. Uh, oftentimes I write a long essay on the on. Well, now it's on the YouTube description where I explain a lot of this stuff. There's going to be a quiz every day in class. That's how attendance is going to be counted, by the way. So every day there's going to be a quiz. And um, it's, it's pretty important you do that because th that's kind of how you stay on top of the class. One of the biggest problems with online learning is people falling behind, right? Like right now we've got, uh, I don't know, a lot of people here in uh, Discord. Uh, as as the semester goes on, what happens is people sort of like, oh, well, it's recorded. I'll watch it later. And then uh, they don't watch it. And then uh, it just progressively uh, snowballs and gets worse. And so in order to sort of um, stave that off, in order to encourage you to stay on top of the ball and to be here present if you can, if you can't make it, then watch the YouTube lecture. It's not a super big deal, even though it's a lot better for you to be here. So you can, uh, you can't see any of these modules right now. They're not published. Just this, just these two. Okay. Um, the uh, the way that I encourage you to keep up with the class is by making a quiz every day. So every day, um, after after class is over, I will write a quiz and put it up. It is due at the start of the next class. So you have until the start of the next class to understand everything in the current class. Does that make sense? So. Uh, and then the quiz will do a little check for knowledge to, um, you know, see if you understand it. So the uh, the answer for <clears throat> today's quiz is cheese wheel. Okay, I'm just going to give that one to you guys right there. So the answer for today's quiz is cheese wheel. I don't know if any of you guys have ever played Skyrim before, 
But that's a Skyrim reference. So there you go. All right. So that's it's going to be a very easy quiz for today. There's no there's no programming questions for today. This is simply to see if you were able to attend the lecture and um, or watch it on YouTube one way or the other and receive the word of the day, which is cheese wheel. All right. You feel like you're going to enjoy my humor? Good. Good. I was, check, I was checking uh, uh, Rate My Professor, which I do about once a year, just to see if, uh, you know, what's going on. And then somebody's like, yeah, his memes uh, are sometimes really funny and sometimes not funny. I'm just like, bruh. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. So, um, he was cheesed to me. That's, that's nice. That's nice. Um, all right. So, that is, this is your central headquarters, okay? That's right. And every time there's an assignment, um, every time there's an assignment, it goes up on it goes up on Canvas in the module section. And so they're organized by week, week one, week two, week three. All of the lectures stay up permanently. I don't delete any of my lectures off YouTube um, unless they get copyright struck or something like that, which uh, drives me crazy. Like I had like three seconds of like. What would you do with a drunken sailor? And it's like copyright strike. And and then my uh, Mr. Bell, you might be amused by this. My hash table lecture for CSI forty one last semester um, got taken out inexplicably. No copyright strike. They just removed it. I'm like, what did you guys have a trouble with with hash tables, man? Like, like it wasn't like normally with a copyright strike, it like notifies you and you can like delete the video or or snip out the parts that have the copyright stuff. But this one is like, no, we do not talk about hash tables on YouTube. And they just wipe the whole thing out, which is a, uh, yeah, I, I was uh, like, no, no appeal possible. Like they just wiped out the entire video. And I was just like, okay. So that, that could happen. I don't know. I can't promise you guys anything. I might get, I might get banned from YouTube from talking about hash tables again. Who knows? So, but I don't delete, I don't delete my videos off, uh, off YouTube. Okay. So that's that. All right. Um, here's, here's the deal. So syllabus is on canvas. Um, and, uh, it's got all the dates we have off stuff like that. Um, we don't really use the Savage textbook. Um, uh, yeah, I might as well just delete that. Uh, really Zybooks is the, is the textbook. Sometimes students ask me for a physical textbook and, uh, It's too far back there to, to reach, but I, Walt Savage was my my professor when I was in college, and he's got a pretty good textbook that I sometimes give to students. You don't need it. Um, okay, so here's the grading system: twenty percent homework, and so homework is mostly going to be um, you guys writing programs. This is a um, this is why physical textbooks aren't great. Yeah, I can't reach it. Um, yeah. Too, too, uh, too far away. So, uh, you guys are going to be writing programs. Uh, it's a foreign language class. You will be learning a foreign language. And in order to learn a foreign language, you must program. You must produce writing. You must be able to read and write and speak and listen. You know, it's... Um, but it, it's a foreign language with math, right? And the good news is the amount of vocabulary you have to memorize for this class is about this big. Uh, when you when you study uh, Mandarin, like I took Mandarin for a couple of years, like two or three years of Mandarin, uh, basically we'd be given these long lists of vocabulary that we had to memorize every week. And you sit there and you do the characters over and over again and just kind of ingrain it into your brain. When doing um, Japanese, every chapter there'd be 40 or 50 words you'd have to memorize. Um, the good news about computer science, even though it's a foreign language, there's only about mm, 10 things you have to memorize something like that. It's not too bad. Um, and you get like one of them a week, something like that. Like it, it's, it's really, it's really not that bad on the memorization front, but what you have to do is you have to put it into practice. You have to, you have to constantly be writing code. You have to constantly be producing things. You have to constantly be, um, reading and understanding other people's code. And you just, over time, you develop a fluency in, in programming. And, and it's just something that just takes a lot of effort. And some, some of you guys have probably programmed before. That's fine. 
Um, if any of you um, see somebody on like Discord posting his like 3D virtual reality like flight simulator that he made, she made, um, don't don't be like, I can't do that. Yeah, uh, you know. Some people, it, it's a weird thing in computer science. Like some people have just programmed their whole life, and this class is going to be easy for them, and that's okay. There's there's going to be opportunities for them to to do cool, interesting stuff. But this class is for people that have never programmed before. Okay, I want to say that one more time. This class is for people that have never programmed before. This is, this class is not for people that have been programming since middle school or whatever. It's for people that have never programmed before. So if you see somebody who's like, you know, hacking into the NSA or something like that, like just let them do their thing. It's fine. You know, it's don't don't compare yourself to other people. Just compare yourself to yourself yesterday. So, 20% uh, writing programs, 20% are quizzes. So the daily quizzes are 20% of your grade. It's, again, this is to keep you... Um, Hunter suddenly turned on. Uh, this is to keep you up to date with the class. The, the worst thing in an online class is the lack of connection between the, the uh, professor and the students. And um, when you know that everything's online, you can watch them whenever you want. There's this tendency to just sort of let things slip and then the further behind you get, you show up to the next lecture and you have no idea what's going on. And, and you look at the YouTube video and you're like, oh man, I got to watch an hour long video. Like, ah, uh, you know. And so the daily quizzes are there to keep you on top of the ball. You don't have to be here exactly, you know, on time. You, you do. I mean, technically you have to be here during class hours. But, you know, like if you can't make it, you know, you can just watch it on YouTube. But the daily quizzes are there to keep you on top of the ball. And also for you to check your knowledge and see if you understand what's going on. And if you don't understand what's going on, send me a message on Discord, post on the Help Center, um, talk to uh, Corente, who is our uh, TA for this uh, semester. So if you guys all see Corente, uh, when our quiz is posted, they're, they're posted after the lecture's over. So after, after we finish now, I'm going to put up a quiz and... There's going to be some different options. What is the magic word of the day? One, it's going to be Porygon, and Cheese Wheel, and the answer is Cheese Wheel. You know, so I'll just put up some different uh, options and just click on it. And there you go. So, um, so if you get a quiz wrong, um, that's oftentimes a sign like, oh, you know, I didn't understand something. And that's an opportunity for you to fix it, right? So one of the, you know, you know, People a lot of times think they understand something when they don't. And so a quiz is a great way of figuring out like if you actually understand it. And if you don't, then just, you know, and I, I kind of monitor the quizzes also. So like if everybody in the class gets a question wrong, then I talk about it again in the next class. And so I, you know, I don't, I don't move on from a topic until I'm reasonably confident that most people understand it. And so there's no, there's no pacing guide for this class. There's no schedule of lectures because it really depends on how quickly y'all are learning. Okay, it, it's a if, if if like students don't understand what a variable is, and you like move on from there, like you're gonna have a it's gonna be a disastrous semester. You know what I mean? It's like imagine you're doing algebra and you're like, uh, I, my class doesn't understand variables. Let's just move on. You know, like it's just like it's like the train runs off the track and it just keeps going down the hill. You know what I mean? So, um, so the quizzes are a way uh, for you to see if you understand something and for me to see if you collectively understand something. Okay. Uh, quizzes are only for the three days. So three lectures a week, so there's three quizzes a week. Yeah, good question. And so each quiz is due at the start of the next class, not due at midnight. A lot of people who are used to Canvas are used to everything being due at midnight. Mm. They're, they're due at the start of the next class. I want you to have it done before the next lecture, not after the next lecture. If I make you do it at midnight, people do it at midnight, right? And that's after the next lecture. So, um, what is a good SSH client for Mac OS? You can just use terminal. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, yeah, daily quiz. Yeah, daily meaning the class day, right? So after Friday, um, the quiz is due on the next Monday. Okay. Uh, two lectures per week. Nope, nope. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, the Friday it, it might have dropped off on uh, on um, Web Advisor. Uh, Fridays are Fridays are a long day, so Mondays and Wednesdays are an hour and ten minutes. And Fridays are two hours long. And I'm not sure why it was scheduled like that. It's a bit weird. 
Um, didn't used to be. But uh, yeah, so it's an hour and 10, hour and 10, and then two hours. So you get lots of lab time on Friday. And so when we do lab time, I expect you guys to not um, just quit Discord. Uh, when, when there's lab time, I want you actively working on a program or something. And then you can screenshot your code and post it on here, especially if we're doing something that's not graded. Post your code away. You know, it's fine. Only homework assignments. I worry about plagiarism. If we're doing like an in-class practice thing, feel free to screenshot your code and post it. Uh, Friday's lab in class. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Zylabs. Uh, Zybooks. Um, Zybooks is kind of a better name here. Um, uh, text recruiting. So uh, it's an online interactive uh, textbook. Uh, there's some animations, like when there's a loop, it shows like a, a car driving around the block a bunch of times and things like that. And so there's a lot of like interactive things that really help you learn. Um, there are some programming assignments you have to do on Zybooks. Um, so you can't just click through, I guess, everything. But uh, it, don't click through stuff. Like actually do the readings. It's really important. Um, the... Uh, Computer science, like C++ is a huge language. And what I talk about are the most important parts. If, if all you do is attend my lectures, you'll have all the important parts and you'll be able to write programs and solve interesting problems. That said, there's a lot of details, right? Um, you know, uh, how do I do a hyperbolic cosine or something like that? I'm not gonna teach you guys how to do a hyperbolic cosine in C++ because um, who cares? You know, I, I, I might do sine and cosine with you guys, but like there's there's a lot there's there's a lot of stuff out there, and so Zybooks is really good at filling in the details. So make sure you uh, make sure you do the textbook readings. It's ten percent of your grade. Okay. Uh, man, what happened to this? Okay, uh, and then the I think this is actually from two years ago. That's interesting. Um, I wonder if I'm looking at the. Okay, no, anyway. So. There we go. 20, 30, 20, 30. Okay, 20% Zybooks, 30% Mastery. Okay. So, yeah. Last year, um, I did away with midterms and finals. And so, like I said, this this thing must be from two years ago, which is odd. Huh. No. So, um, um, yeah. So, last year, I did away with midterms and finals. There's no midterm in this class. There's no second midterm in this class. There's no final in this class. Um, so, for finals week, uh, legally, we're obligated to meet. Um, typically... Uh, what about hacking the NSA? <laughs> uh, in, in order to hack the NSA, you just have to wear sunglasses when programming and and be be able to announce that you're in the mainframe. That's 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 all that's really re required according to according to Hollywood. So, uh, mastery exams are a sort of low stakes uh, replacement for midterms and finals. So, a mastery exam uh, means. Um, uh, you're given a short, like, four-question test to see if you understand a topic. Like, we're going to be going over loops. Loop is how you do something multiple times. And so for the for the competency exam, you might have um, one question might be, write a program that prints out. Um, yeah, I love computer science 100 times or something like that, right? And so you have to be able to write code. You have to be able to read code. Usually there's one question where... I put up code and I'm like, explain to me in English what this code is doing. There's going to be a question where you have to write code, where you have to like produce code yourself. And then there's usually going to be two like checks for knowledge, like what's the difference between this and this and, and things like that. So they're not, they're not easy, but they are low stakes. Hacker man. Yeah. Perfect. You have to have upbeat music. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, uh, <laughs> 
I, I was actually in uh, in high school journalism when uh, uh, Hackers the movie came out. I don't know if you guys saw that it has Angelina Jolie in it. And so I was actually sent on a, a press pass junket thing to review Hackers the movie. And uh, one of the most unrealistic computer science movies of all time, but still just an absolute, absolute classic. Okay, Hack the World and all that stuff, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so the, uh, the master exams are not easy, but at the same time, they're low stakes. What does that mean? That means you can, you can take them uh, again. So it's not the same exam, it's a different exam, and you can take it up to four times to demonstrate that you've mastered a subject. Mastering a subject means you pass three out of the four questions. If you pass three out of the four questions, you have mastery in it, congratulations. If you don't, you don't. And um, that's 30% of your grade. And if you don't demonstrate mastery, the next week there will be another mastery exam on the same topic. And if you don't do that one, then you have to go into the tutorial center. So uh, if, you, if you don't pass two of the master exams on the same topic in a row, uh, there will be a third and there will be a fourth master exam. But in order to unlock it, there will be a password on the third one. You have to go into the tutorial center. You have to sit down with Crente. Crente wave to everybody. Um, and uh, uh, he... Are, are you only online right now, Crente? Or are you in person in the tutorial center as well? Um, he's in person too. Okay. Yeah, so you can either go online or in person, and he will sit down and explain to you what a loop is and, and the syntax and the difference between this kind of loop and that kind of loop and stuff like that. Okay. So um, if you, let's, let's say you, you get an F on the first three and pass it on the fourth one, congratulations, you've passed it. The previous ones are erased and you get the highest score. Okay. That's why it's low stakes. Um, I, I, I don't really believe in punishing students grade-wise in this class. Um, what I really want out of this class is for you to learn computer science. Okay. So even if you, uh, um, even if you flub a master exam, not a big deal, take it again. You know what I mean? Uh, after four though, like I figure like if you don't have it after four, like it's probably a, maybe a lost cause. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, my, my philosophy when teaching is not like to um, filter out the unworthy, you know, basically I just want all of you coming out of here able to program your way out of a paper bag, you know what I mean? Like actually be able to sit down and write a program and have it do cool stuff and that's your goal for the end of the semester. Okay. So um, all of these things are pretty low stakes. The quizzes you can't retake but they're only a few points each day. So if you miss a question, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, the homework projects have a last chance thing. Um, my face is covering the word last chance. Let me hide that, I guess. Um, last chance. So uh, once during the semester, you can turn in an assignment late, okay? So if you, uh, if uh, life happens sometimes or, or sometimes you think that you can you can do a homework assignment and you're uh, unrealistically optimistic about it. it happens. Uh, happens. You look at a homework assignment, you're like, oh, I could do that. It should take me an hour. And then you get into it, you realize, nope, nope, nope. And unfortunately, you only started it an hour before the deadline, and then uh, you, you get a zero on it. So once during the semester, only once, once during the semester, um, you can go into the tutorial center and do a code review for your homework. Um, you have to have something. You can't just come in with a blank sheet of paper. Corrente can't help you if you have a blank sheet of paper. There's nothing to help with. But uh, basically, uh, come in with um, a as much as you can do on it, and he will help you fix the bugs. He will help you understand what's going on. It, it, you can do that anyway. <laughs> like you can just, All of you guys can go into the tutorial center and get help anyway, but um, in order to do last chance, you have to go through there and you'll go through your code a line at a time and, uh, say, oh, you can do this differently. Oh, that's, that's your bug right there. Uh, your variables, uh, you could probably name them something a little bit better, huh? And it, it's just nice to have an experienced programmer, um, helping you with your stuff. And, 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 the, and like I said, he's there all the time. So, uh, make sure you take advantage of that resource. Our, our school has a really good tutorial center. And it's, it, it's, um, 
I think the biggest mistake students make sometimes is just trying to do it all themselves. And uh, when they get stuck, they just kind of throw up their hands and give up. Uh, we've got a lot of resources. Um, there's the Help Center on Discord. There's me. Um, I'm sort of on Discord 24-7. Like, I'm not if I'm, like, out doing, you know, martial arts or something. But um, you basically message me on Discord anytime, and I'm pretty good about answering the messages on Discord. Um, about 95%. Every once in a while, like, a message, like, comes in when, like... I'm, I'm busy with something, I swipe it off, and I, I forget to come back to it. Um, so if you don't hear from me after, like, a day, like, message me again. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty good about answering messages on Discord. And um, you message Crente. Uh, Mr. Bell uh, is a alumni. I don't, I don't want to volunteer him for, uh, for help, but uh, you'll see him probably. Uh, I code and beat up people? That's, that's right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At the same time, in fact, I... Uh, I do martial arts with a laptop strapped to my forehead. It's, uh, it's a very advanced form of uh, laptop jitsu. Um, Hazelton is um, also um, something of a graduate of our computer science program. Uh, you can see his name's in orange. Um, Corrente's name is in green. Bell's name is in pink. These are people that um, you can that are that are experienced people. Um, I think, uh, we had a couple other people that are going to come by today as well. Walker's here. Uh, Walker, say hi to people if you're here. And, um, I think, um, Michael Juarez and Pablo were going to come by. They might be coming to the next class. Okay. So yeah, there, there, one of the really nice things about computer science here at Clovis is that we've got a really good group of alumni and they remember that when they were freshmen, there's a group of people that help them out, and uh, so we kind of pay it forward or some pay it backwards. I don't know some sort of payment, where where alumni will help out with uh, with the incoming uh, class, and uh, it's a, it's a really cool it's a really cool system. I don't pay him. Uh, Corrente is getting paid, I guess. But um, uh, you also told him it was in person. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. So basically, there's there's a good group of people, and you'll you'll see them just answering questions on the help center and stuff like that. So uh, it's 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 really nice. And make sure make sure you thank them, uh, pray emoji or or whatever you know uh, when they when they help you. So Kearney pays us in memes. Uh, that that is that is true, and pound cake when we're in person. Um, so when. Uh, Um, NFTs, yeah. Um, yeah, and in person, I, I oftentimes bring in like cake and things like that, but oh, we're, we're online for now. Okay. So, uh, bu 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 bum, let's talk about computer science. First of all, do you guys have any questions about the structure of the class? Basically, there's going to be a programming assignment every week. Uh, competence exams will be kind of weekly as well. Zybooks will be weekly as well. Um, and then the quizzes will be every day where every day is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's, that's our structure. Okay. What would it look like if we go back to in-person hybrid? The classroom on campus, AC1114, has a, a Logitech, um, a, like ceiling camera system or whatever. And so it can broadcast the lecture online and, um, if you're online and you don't want to be in person, then you would watch the lecture as I'm walking around, writing things on the whiteboard, things like that. And I would have Discord up on my computer and I would walk over and check Discord. Uh, Corrente uh, would feasibly be um, answering questions on Discord as well. Um, one, of, one, of the, one of the downsides to that, that system is that online students tend to get neglected um, when there's both online and in-person, right? So, um, you know, that's my daughter's experience on Zoom last year. Um, as people went back in person, there was less and less attention spent on the people on Zoom. So um, I, I will work hard to make sure that doesn't happen. And so you can, you can choose to either come in person or be online, uh, whatever you feel is safest for your own personal 
circumstance, masks are required on campus as we speak. So if you do come on campus, everyone must be masked, uh, which is probably a good thing because uh, I know from personal experience, uh, some people will lie about being vaccinated and uh, um, a number of my a number of my friends got infected by um, the Delta variant. So, uh, all right, uh, please tell me you aren't learning assembly. That's CSI 45. Okay. All late assignments are zeros. Yeah, you get one, you get, you, essentially you get one late assignment per, per semester. Okay. So, uh, the good news is there's lots of help available for you. So as long as you don't, like the, the only way you can really fail an assignment is if you just wait too long to start. Uh, if you if you start when you get the assignment, you'll get to a certain point and be like, oh, crap, I don't know how to do a cosine or I don't know how to do an absolute value or something. Uh, then you just post on to the help center. Hey, what's the function to do absolute value? And people type in abs. Like, I've got abs. No, the name of the function is abs. Oh, okay, you know. We'll be learning hands-on coding or will the coding be self-study? You're going to be learning lots and lots of coding in this class. I'm going to teach it. Definitely. And you're going to do it yourself. Definitely. And you're going to do it on Zybooks. Definitely. And it's going to be on the quizzes and you're, 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 you're going to do it a lot. And the reason for that is because repetition is what ingrains things into your brain. Uh, if, if I taught you guys, I don't know, loops once and never tested you on it and never had you use them, uh, it would fall right out of your brain. You have to just keep repeating and reading and writing over and over again. And then it becomes second nature. So um, one, one of the traps that students fall into is that um, they'll just like not do homework because they're like, look, it's only 30% of my grade. If I get 100% on everything else, I will pass with a C. And I do also do lots of extra credit too. So they're like, look, I'll just not do the homework and I'll get a C. Mm. Guess what happens when you don't practice? You know, like if you don't actually ever speak Japanese or write Japanese, it just all, all it falls out of your brain, you know, and then you fail everything else. So it's a, it's a trap. Definitely. So just do everything. All right. Uh, wh where are we coding outside the textbook? We're going to talk about that on Wednesday. Um, for now, just, uh, this is just, uh, on PowerPoint. Like I said, the only... The only thing you need to know for today is cheese wheel. That's that's it. There's no programming to do today. Just get Zybooks bought, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll go over um, putty in, in a second. Okay, so computer science. What is computer science? See, this template moves all the titles over over my face. So it says introduction to computer science or something. Okay, so what is computer science? Computer science. Uh, a lot of people just think of computer science is like programming. And um, it's part of it, I guess. Um, there's a lot of uh, professors I work with that would be uh, horrified if, um, if somebody said, yeah, computer science is just programming. One of, my, uh, one of my professors when I was in college um, was proud of the fact that he, he had never written a line of code in his life. He was proud of that. He, he, he deliberately went out of his way to not write code. He had grad students for that. They would write the programs for him. He would just design them. And he was a cryptography guy and a very brilliant cryptography guy. In fact, so brilliant, I dropped his class because I couldn't figure out what the hell he was talking about. So uh, he had never written, he, he was a computer science professor, taught in, in the field of computer science professor, never written a line of code in his life. So you can do that because computer science is not just programming. Okay, so uh, he designed cryptography algorithms. Cryptography is like what uh, protects you when you connect to the bank, right? And, and secures the communication between you and Wells Fargo or whatever. Okay, so he designed those things. He was not a programmer. He was very proud of that. Okay. Can you ask a question about coding? Yeah, always. Just ask a question. That's, that's what Discord is for. You guys can talk in class. It's one of the nice things about Discord. Like uh, for those of you watching the video at home, I've got Discord on my second screen over here. And every once in a while, I glance over and see if there's any questions for me, and then I answer them. Uh, what do you think the best coding software to use is? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go over that on on Wednesday. Uh, 
I love the line. It's so good I dropped this class. Yeah. He was brilliant, man. Like, I, I was just sitting there like, man, this is some, some high-level stuff here. <laughs> man. Wow. Yeah, this guy's smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was a required class, and then I, I was going to, like, a friend of mine was tutoring me in the class, and so I was going over to this guy's house, and this guy, my friend, was, like, a super brilliant genius, and he was, like, tutoring me, and I was like, man, I can't believe this is a required class. He's like, yeah, it's not, it's not required. What are you talking about? I'm like, huh? He's like, yeah, it's not a required class. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Drop. So, uh, we will be using C++ in this class, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so there's, um, another one of my, one of my favorite professors, a guy by the name of Bill Griswold. He, uh, he studied, um, what's called software engineering or like ways you can make programming better. And he's a real cool dude. He did a keto. <clears throat> I took a couple of keto classes with him back in the day. And, uh, um, uh, uh re really good professor. And, and so his whole thing was like, how do we set up? an environment where programmers can be more productive or write less bugs or whatever, you know, and, um, and that's computer science also. So what is C plus plus? How do you add plus plus? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so there's, there's two other things about computer science you have to know. The first is that computer science is awesome. And the second is that computer science is weird. Okay. So, uh, it is awesome. It's, it's cool. It's, uh, ever since I wrote my first program, like back in the day, I was like, all right, this is what I want to do, uh, for the rest of my life. Like it, it was never, it was never really a question for me. Uh, I guess in kindergarten, I wanted to be a mathematician cause I like doing like arithmetic or something. Uh, and then a mathematician told me that's not actually what mathematicians do. And I was disappointed. So, um, but once I, once I started programming, I'm like, oh, this is cool stuff, you know? Um, but it's also weird. It is a weird field. There's weird people in it too, you know, uh, myself excluded, <clears throat> of course. Uh, there are weird people though in, in computer science, but mostly the field itself, it's a weird field, okay? So computer science is awesome, right? So you can work anywhere in the planet, in any field in the planet, okay? So uh, you get paid well, right? So a friend of mine just travels around the world, like doing jobs, like wherever he feels like working. Um, he, uh, uh, refactored Twitter, for example, like Twitter, like you know, Twitter. And, uh, you know, so like I was watching him on Facebook and he's like in Saudi Arabia this one week and then he's doing rock climbing in Washington state the next week, gets paid pretty good money, travels the world. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, you have to be at a certain level in order to, to do that, you know, where people are just like, oh, you're here. Oh yeah. We'll hire you for a week, you know? Um, but you can work in farming, you can work in the, the shark lab at, uh, at CSU Long Beach requires you to know programming. Like I was talking to the guy that ran, you know, you know, shark week, right? Uh, I was talking to the guy at the CSU Long Beach shark lab and he's like, yeah, there's two things we require for you to join the shark lab. You have to have a scuba certificate and you have to know how to program. And so, um, uh, he, he, he showed a shot of himself, uh, on the pier, uh, in the 1960s, or no, sorry, in a kayak in the 1960s, topless, tanned off the coast of Hawaii, chasing sharks, you know? And then he's like, all right, that's what it was like when I was in grad school nowadays. And it showed one of his grad students on the pier in like Santa Monica or something with a blanket over his head and a laptop, you know, and they're programming, they're programming a little submersible sub that would chase sharks around and stuff like that. Um, literally you can work in any field. Uh, I've worked in all sorts of different fields. I've worked uh, for a defense contractor. I've worked doing heart research. I've worked, um, drug research. Um, uh, what else? Um, work doing a video conferencing system for the military is like just a bunch of weird, you know, er education. Um, and not, not like teaching like this, but actually doing like education. Uh, research specifically and um then you can work remotely too like mr bell's doing right now so uh, it's it's cool it's, it's it's a really nice field and it's in high demand like we can't uh, produce enough programmers um domestically so 
it's pretty good money and uh, it can take some time to get a job like the job hunting experience especially right now with the pandemic it's kind of weird but um you know once once you get in like it it it's good money and and you can kind of work wherever you want average starting salary for computer science with bachelor's four year degree 72,000 a year so starting starting salary starting salary that's not average salary it's starting salary it's pretty good it's not like doctor level it's not pharmacist level but it's pretty good um, that said like a student of mine graduated from Berkeley would it be two years ago now he came in to visit me and uh, he's like I got a job working for Chase Manhattan paying 180,000 a year To be fair, this is in the Bay Area, and so 180000 in the Bay Area is like, you know, minimum wage or something, but it's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Starting. That's just four-year degree from Berkeley. $180,000. Here you go. Yeah. So, uh, average salary in the hundred in the Bay Area is one hundred ten. So, he was actually getting paid above the, um, the average in the Bay Area, but substantially. But uh, I, I joke somewhat, but... Um, the the area is getting cheaper because people are leaving, right? If you look at the growth of like housing prices in California, uh, Fresno's housing's gone up like fifty percent over the last year. Uh, the Bay Area has yeah. So, uh, Myra got into Berkeley. Nice, nice, nice. That's good. Um, uh, yeah, the Bay Area is ridiculously expensive, and now that people are doing telework, people are fleeing the Bay Area. Uh, housing prices in Tahoe have skyrocketed because people are like I'll just live in Tahoe which is beautiful there's skiing there's a lake you know it's not um, covered in you know crime like San Francisco's and then if I ever need to go into Facebook or whatever I just drive the three hours you know and and so housing prices in Tahoe have exploded through the roof housing prices in Fresno's exploded through the roof so um, yeah so, uh, yeah, so the Bay Area is kind of uh, equalizing a little bit. Like, people are fleeing and driving housing prices up elsewhere, but housing prices in the Bay Area are, you know, not going up, so that's good. Um, if you're an intern at Google, it pays 6000 a month. It's pretty good. All right. Um, and, uh, and the thing that I really like about it, though, is that it's different every day. So in computer science, you shouldn't be doing the same thing every day. My wife likes that. My wife is a pharmacist. She likes doing the same thing every day. I don't. I would get bored out of my mind doing the same thing every day. In computer science, if you're doing the same thing every day, you're doing something wrong, right? You write a program for it, <laughs> right? But if you're doing repetitive things and you're not having to think about it, you're just doing the same thing every day, you just write a program, you just automate that. Okay? And then you just click a button and you, like, play Path of Excel or something. I don't know. I'll never work a minimum wage job again because they do the same thing every day. Yeah, it, it killed me. Like, working at Dairy Queen was uh, an interesting experience, but I have no desire to work at Dairy Queen again. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad I did it, but nah. I, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Um... Having some skipping. Uh, I can lower the image quality. Mm -hmm. Stream quality, I'm at 1080p, 30 frames a second. Um, I'll lower it to 15, I guess. My favorite food from, from Dairy Queen. So I made this thing called the Mint Mocha Blizzard. It's pretty good. It's basically what it sounds like. Um, worked at Vaughn's at 3 a.m. Oh, yeah. I had a friend that, that worked night shift at a grocery store. Um, while full time in, in college, it was mm, brutal. Okay, and then finally, computer science is awesome because you're always stretching your mind. Like when when you're doing computer science right, you should feel constantly like challenged, like mentally challenged. And like, um, if if you don't like feeling uncomfortable, like if you want if you want to feel like you know everything, this is the wrong field. It's the wrong field. Um, like, uh, I have open on my computer here. I've got um, a CMake tutorial that I'm running through. 
I've got, uh, what else do I have over here? I've got a uh, lecture by the C++ committee on what belongs in the C++ standard library because I'm proposing something to be added to the standard library and it's probably not going to go in because of these guys saying like, yeah, we don't want anything. And so like, I'm constantly learning stuff and improving my mind, but it's uncomfortable. And, and it, it'll feel like somebody's grabbing your brain and just like stretching it, right? In, in every direction. And um, that could be uncomfortable, I guess, but um, it's good, it's good for you. You're constantly learning, you're constantly growing. You can't, you can't stagnate or you, I mean, I, I, I guess you could stagnate after you get a job. <laughs> Look at WebAdvisor. <laughs> There's a council of C++. Yeah. Yeah. So these guys are the committee members on, um, on, uh, they're not, they're not all of them, but there's a committee that controls C++ and they're talking about what they wanted to add or not add into, into the standard library. And, um, uh, and so looking at it, I'm like, yeah, they're not going to improve my thing. Yeah. Even though my thing's pretty cool. So how many coding languages do you have in your toolbox? Uh, man, uh, C++ uh, is my main one. Unix shell scripting is the main one that I use a lot. Um, I've worked as a professional Java programmer for a while. I've done Python. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that, um, you know, I'm an expert or anything, but it's Python. It's really easy. Uh, I've done Scratch. Like, I don't know, dude. Like, uh, the, here, here's the thing. Like, after after you've done computer science for a while, you, you kind of realize the language doesn't really matter that much. I mean, it does, but it kind of doesn't. And if you need to learn a new language, like, you can just learn a new language. Um, um, when, I, when I took my programming languages class, we learned a new programming language a week. So, like, 10-week class, every week you're going to learn a new programming language. This week we're learning Pascal. And so it's like they go through Pascal, the language in a lecture, and they're like, now write a program that does a Riemann sum integration on it. You know, and then the next week we're learning Algol 60, which is an old, old 1960, right? Old stuff. And then after that we learned Fortran or, no, we didn't learn Fortran, I guess not. Um, um, we'll, we'll learn uh, ML, we'll learn a functional programming language. It's every week you're learning a new language. And after a while, you're just like, oh, okay, it's not bad. How do they make a variable? How do they do an if statement? How do they do a loop? How do they do a function? Okay, got it. You know, it's 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 really not a big deal. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, WebAdvisor, uh, God, man. It's like, it's like they, they, they made a product that like worked in the 1990s or something. Look at this thing. Here's Web Advisor right here. Good job, Web Advisor. Never change. Doesn't work in Firefox. <laughs> you don't understand how they don't update that website? It's because Web Advisor is like five guys sitting in an office somewhere, and they basically don't do anything. They just keep it running. And as long as colleges around the the country are paying them these huge fees every month, they just have money flowing in, and they have absolutely no desire to innovate. So. Yeah. Dropping truths right there. <laughs> okay, so um, also it's a, it's a field by and for lazy people, right? Computer science people don't like doing repetitive work, so we write things to automate the repetitive work. So uh, it's for lazy people that like to work hard. Like we will spend 40 hours automating something that takes us an hour to do, right? We'll, we will work our butts off to automate something that is 15 minutes of our life every day. <laughs> but what's nice is then you just don't waste 15 minutes of your life every day. Um, stuck on campus because web advisor is down. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's a thing. So, uh, one of my students, uh, actually one of the first students I taught here, um, he worked for a, uh, real estate agent and, uh, the real estate agent had him search. I don't know if you guys know this, but real estate agents have access to a secret database. It's not really secret, but a secret database that only real estate agents have access to that has every real estate listing. <clears throat> you guys know about this? It's called like, um, 
Uh, MLS, yeah. Is that League of Legends? No, it's ALS. Never mind. Okay. <clears throat> MLS. <clears throat> so uh, he would go on to MLS and do a quarry. She was looking for, like, REOs. Um, you know, like when somebody abandons a house and then the bank tries to sell it and stuff like that. And so she was looking for REOs that had been on the market for, like, three months. That meant the bank had been trying to sell a property and it wasn't selling. And then she would go and lowball them, right? She'd go in and be, be like, I'll offer you $50,000 below your asking price and, and pick up cheap properties. That was how she made her money. And then she'd go in and fix them up and um, and, and make money off it. And so she paid him, I don't know, 100 bucks a week, 200 bucks a week, something like that, to go on there and, and do, these, do these searches. And so um, after a while, he realized he was doing the exact, and, and he had to like uh, take the data and put it into Microsoft Word and have a picture of the house and and have the description and the price like this. And he realized he was just doing the same thing every week. And so he wrote a program that would do that for him. So every day at Friday at one o'clock, it would go to the MLS database, do the query, pull the data, do, 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 go into do, go into Microsoft Word, paste the picture, bloop, 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 scroll, bloop, bloop, scroll, bloop, save, pop, email, bloop, done. And it would just run automatically in the background. And he'd get paid 200 bucks. <laughs> and, uh, and so after he moved, he went up to uh, CSU uh, uh, Sacramento. Uh, the, uh, the real estate agent's like, hey, uh, I know you're moving, but w would it be okay if you still work for me? You know, that he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> and so she just kept paying him 200 bucks a week. And it's not like he was cheating her, right? Like, you know, like she was getting the data she needed. And she was paying him, and she just didn't know that he was sitting there playing, you know, Madden or something, and the things, is, his computer is going, you yeah. know. Uh, yeah, message me on Discord is the best, the best way. Uh, you can send me, uh, I, I check my Canvas messages like once a day, and I check email maybe once a day. Uh, but Discord is is uh, definitely the best way to get access to me. Okay. So, uh, computer science is weird. That's what it says up here up top, blocked by my face. Computer science is weird. Um, even though money's good, if you if you don't like it, you're going to be miserable, right? So a friend of mine uh, took my class. Actually, he was a friend of mine, um, and uh, got an A in it. And he just was like, "I don't want to, I don't want to be sitting in front of a computer all day," you know. And that's fair. Like, uh, you know, in order to improve my posture, I actually got a sit stand desk. So you guys want to see something magical? So, uh, yeah, I got to sit sand desk. I could, I could stand up and not be just hunched over in front of my computer all day. Uh, yeah, he decided I don't want to be in front of a computer all day, and he, he's a pest control guy now. So, um, you know, you kind of you kind of have to enjoy it. You have to enjoy that feeling of, like, having a puzzle and solving it and really having smoke come out of your ears and your brain's, like, melting. You're like, ah, I can't, I can't. Oh, wait, I got it. Yeah, this is easy. <laughs> That's, uh, that's, that's the computer science life where it, it flips between like impossibly hard, like, oh no, actually wait, no, it's pretty easy. And you have to have that sense of like triumph of like, oh, I solved this, this cool problem. And, and if you do that, then, you know, computer science is probably pretty good for you. Um, second bullet point here, my sister, um, very smart person. Uh, she's been taking computer science now for, for a while, but when she started, she had, a, she had a lot of trouble with it because even though she was like a biology major and all this stuff, it's not really science. Like in sciences, you can usually like be given a list of things you have to know. Like uh, in, in this semester, you're gonna learn how to titrate and you're gonna learn how to do this and that and the other thing. And computer science is like, you're gonna learn how to solve problems. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, there, there's not like a thing, like there, there are, there's a few things you're gonna have to learn. You have to learn loops and variables and, and things like this, but at the end of the day, computer science is solving puzzles. And there's not like one way to solve the puzzle. It's infinite, right? And so, um, so it's like math. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, math, math, uh, when you get into proofs and things like that, like there's a lot of art to it. You know what I mean? Like, like prove that this is true. And you're like, ah, I don't know how to do that. You know, and you like sit, sit there and think about it. Computer science is kind of, kind of like math in that, in that regard. 
there's not like one way of doing something. You know, you have to really think about it. You got your tools and okay, how do I how do I use my tools to solve a problem? That's kind of what it comes down to. How do I how do I program a robot to go through a maze? Right? Like, um, you know, it's it's a different thing than like memorize how to titrate a chemical or memorize the first twenty elements on the periodic table. Okay. Um, and it's also hard to prep for job interviews, right? Because job interviews are usually like, um, they want you to solve a, a puzzle, right? Usually, often. Um, and so you can't really prep for it because every puzzle is different. You know? So will you, will you be okay if you're not taking, yeah, this, this, it's not a math class. We're not, we're not, you, you have to kind of know trig and, and that's about it. You don't have to know anything more than that. Even the trig we use in this class, this class isn't too bad. Okay. So, uh, so imagine you're trapped in a, uh, it's not really a quiz. Um, imagine you're trapped in a well, okay? Uh, it's like Timmy's falling down the well and Lassie's going for elephant. Um, imagine you're trapped in the bottom of a well and you've got like these, these things next to you, right? You've got three, uh, 10 foot long PVC pipes. You got a three long lengths of pipes. You got two. 10 foot long two by fours. You got 50 feet of silk rope. You got five nails, two of which are bent. You got a roll of duct tape, a hammer and a saw. How do you get out of the well? That's computer science. So uh, uh, we got three minutes left. I'd like for all of you guys to just, this is this is your first programming assignment. No, no coding necessary. No coding necessary. Just sit there, think about it. How would you, how would you escape from the well? These are your tools. You put them, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. So just think about it. Should we write it down? Yeah, put it on Discord. Put it on Discord. Don't read other people's responses until until you respond. If you have to copy off uh, somebody for a zero point quiz. <laughs> okay. It's a well. You're you're down. You fell down a well. Yeah, um, as to what makes people good at computer science, it's it's actually really hard to say. Um, there's not like one specific skill that is like, oh, you're going to be a computer, you're going to be a good computer science person. It's sort of um, kind of a general uh, critical thinking and curiosity and um, ability to experiment. Don't worry too much about failing. Persistence, yeah. Sticking at it. And, you know, having some technical rigor, you know, being able to be precise in your thoughts. That probably helps and things like that. But people have not been able to identify, like, math skill or, like, language skill. Like, there's no, like, one thing that really controls if you're good at computer science. Mostly you just have to stick with it and have the right attitude. Um, and you'll be good at it. Start hammering at 5 a.m. so the neighbors come over to complain. Brilliant. What's the width of the well? I didn't tell you. <laughs> uh, it's a good question. Uh, uh, let's say it's uh, I don't know, 30 feet wide. Like that. How durable is silk rope? Pretty good, actually. Pretty good. As long as it doesn't abrade. It's actually pretty strong. Is there air resistance in the well? There is air in the well. I don't know about air resistance, but... With the physics problem, the walls are frictionless. Yeah. Climb out. <laughs> Tie the bent nails to the rope and rappel up. Get water into the well so you can swim out. Create a ladder with the PVC pipes. Simply fly. <laughs> Take the stairs. <laughs> That's funny. Connect the PVC pipes up with the duct tape. Use the nails to nail the new two boards. Okay. Ascend. <laughs> it's a seal meme. There you go.
wrap the rope onto the pipe and throw it. Write a program to do it for you. <laughs> Connect the three pipes together with duct tape and the nails. Tie the rope around them. Try to throw the pipes up so they become perpendicular to the hole. Then climb. Yeah. Use a 2x4 with nails as a pickaxe to get up. Yeah, yeah so as you can see, um, make a ladder. Just free climb it. <laughs> uh, making some sort of grappling hook. Yeah, so as you can see, there's a lot of different ways of solving the problem. And there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer, uh, but there's definitely trade-offs, right, between the different approaches, right? It's like free climbing has the benefit of, like, you don't have to fabricate anything. If you uh, free climb, you just climb out. Downside is if you slip, then you're going to fall 30 feet. You know? So um, when, when people present their different solutions to a problem in computer science, like what, what we have here, people sit there and talk about them. Like, all right, what's the pros? What's the cons? How much is it going to cost? How long is it going to take? You know, that kind of stuff. And that's, that's what a lot of computer science boils down to is simply, um, you know, having different computer science people have different ideas on how to solve something. You sort of sit down and you sort of hash it out and you're like, Oh my, uh, yeah, their, their solution's better than mine. Yeah. So, uh, do you even lift, bro? <laughs> Speed run, glitchless, use pipes to prop fly out of the hole. Yeah. If this was Skyrim, you could just get on a horse, you know, and just ride up the side, right? <laughs> so, uh, that's it. Uh, 109. So, we have come to the end of... Drink milk from cows. <laughs> um, we've come to the end of the first day. Hope you guys had fun today. On Wednesday, we are going to install Putty and get you guys connected to the server if you have uh, if you want uh, i would recommend getting that sorted out before wednesday if not we will get everybody online on wednesday uh, putty is only for pcs if you have a mac uh, mr bell key post the uh, terminal to use on mac as well um, and I'll, I'll post the link to putty so basically what you're going to do is you're going to download putty uh, install it optionally and then you're going to connect to the class server. And the class server is where we're going to be doing all of our programming assignments. So we're going to get that all set up on Wednesday. But it's probably best to try and get yourself situated before then. Uh, just in case something goes um Do you need a class code for Zybooks? You shouldn't. It should just um, you should just be able to pay right there. And can you add the course? Yes. So anybody who wants to add, hang out after the class is over. And I will add everybody. That's sort of my philosophy. I add up to the fire department's limit. Um, it's online right now, so <laughs> yeah, whatever, I'll add everybody. Okay, so that's it for today, everyone. Thank you, uh, this is gonna be a great semester. Uh, pandemic makes everything weird, but we will, we will do our best and have a good time, okay? So I'll see you all at noon on Wednesday. Is the quiz already up? It, it'll be up in a, in a sec, okay? See if you can remember cheese wheel. <laughs> All right. See you guys.